An electric train is traveling at 70 miles per hour due west. A harsh wind is blowing 40 miles per hour at 30 degrees east-southeast. Which direction and at what speed is the steam blowing? The answer in just a moment, but first, fall is coming, folks. In fact, if my math is correct, this episode drops either on the autumnal equinox or the day before, and you know what you want in the fall? You want soup. And our friends at Kettle and Fire have the soups for you. If you want regular soup, they got some butternut squash, they got some creamy tomato, they got some chili with beans, they got Thai curry soup, they got miso soup. If you're looking for keto-friendly, they got a broccoli cheddar, they've got butter curry, they've got mushroom bisque, they've got spicy cauliflower soup, and they, of course have their collection of bone broth. I had the turmeric ginger just recently. It's delicious. and Beef and chicken, of course, you can use as a base for your own soup or just drink it like tea. It'll work with your keto. It'll work with your fasting. It's just good stuff. And you know what? Save 10%. Go to kettleandfire.com. It's K-E-T-T-L-E-A-N-D-F-I-R-E.com. Fill up your box. Use code BETTERHUMANHOOD at checkout for 10% off. It's kettleandfire.com. Code BETTERHUMANHOOD at checkout for 10% off. Let's do the show. Welcome to Better Humanhood, where we build a better world by building better people. We have to live on the planet, and we have to live with other people. We have conversations about making that a wonderful proposition. Hey, welcome or welcome back to Better Humanhood. Hope you are doing awesome. Hope this moment in time is the best it can be for you. A professor in my introductory philosophy class in college as an undergrad used to open class with something like a brain teaser to tweak our perspective. I read one at the top of the show, but here it is again. Listen a second time. An electric train is traveling 70 miles per hour due west. Harsh wind is blowing 40 miles per hour at 30 degrees east-southeast. Which direction and at what speed is the steam blowing? The answer, of course, is there is no steam. It's an electric train. Here's another one. Arizona has the largest population of people with asthma. Why is that? Well, some people said the air must be very polluted, but that's not true. The real answer is the air is so clean and it's so dry, so much desert air, The people with severe asthma move there in large numbers since it's so easy to breathe. It's a matter of taking a few moments, thinking about the information provided, and gaining some perspective. And a few moments seems like a long time these days. You know, I just saw a study that said 16 seconds of waiting will drive people to anger. 16 seconds. Sure, that's a lot of silence if you're listening to a podcast, but... I can't fathom 16 seconds drives you over the edge. Wow. Back in the first part of our series on empathy, I know that was a while ago, but you can always go back and listen. We gave Roman Kersnard 6's definition of empathy from his book, Empathy, Why It Matters and How to Get It, as the art of stepping imaginatively into the shoes of another person, understanding their feelings and perspectives, and using that understanding to guide your actions. Perspective can be difficult, particularly if you're the sort of person who systematizes your world the way I do. If it's not obvious already, we're using perspective here to mean the state of one's ideas, the facts known to one, etc., and having a meaningful relationship. You might be familiar with the word in terms of spatial relationships, such as making a two-dimensional drawing appear three-dimensional by sending lines such as streets and buildings toward a vanishing point, and that's actually how the word originates, as the science of optics. The first appearance of perspective as a sort of mental outlet comes in 1762. And for an exercise in perspective, wander on back through history 50 years at a time. Just think about this. It's 2019. We go back 50 years. It's 1969. It's Woodstock. It's Vietnam. It's landing on the moon. It's just the world is so different. And go back 50 years before that, 
It's 1919. It's the end of World War I. We've just started flying. <laughs> Go back 50 years before that. It's 1869. The last slaves are learning that they're free. We go back 50 years before that, it's 1819, and the world is so, so, so different. It's pre-industrial revolution. It's 50 years at a time, four times, and it's another world. If you want a, another interesting take on perspective, on perspective, go listen to Malcolm Gladwell's podcast, Revisionist History. He's got four seasons out. It take you probably, I don't know, he did a does about 10 episodes a season and sometimes he throws in a bonus one like he did with season four or so i'll take you something on the or uh um, something on the order of 35 hours to to listen to it uh, in full so, you know just pull out five or six that sound interesting to you good stuff but let's make an argument for considering perspectives that are different for your first take first the very least it's an interesting mental exercise and we don't think enough we spend an awful lot of time not doing any thinking, thanks to Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and that kind of thing. So, I don't know about you, I spend a lot of time just sitting and thinking. It's a good exercise. Next, you don't even have to see something from another person's point of view. If you can step outside of your own emotional response to an event or an assertion, it shows that you have control over your emotions and your thoughts. Not in a way that shows you don't feel, but in a way that shows you're not ruled by emotion, which is particularly important when you're in a potentially dangerous situation, especially if you're responsible for a family or maybe a classroom in such a situation. Being able to consider various perspectives gives you power, plain and simple. Let's now consider seeing something from other people's perspectives. You might learn something particularly about context. We're going to dive into politics here. I'm going to pick on President Trump. I know it's been a while since I've done that, in particular with two things. One thing he did during the campaign and one thing he did a little more recently. During the campaign, he was using the phrase America first. Now, I actually wrote a while ago, if you want to go look at the show notes, I have a link to, link to my blog post on context. The, American, the America First Committee shut down when the U.S. entered World War II on December 7th, 1941. You all know this, day of infamy. The Japanese Navy pulled a surprise attack on the U.S. naval base at Pearl Harbor in the Hawaiian Territory. Hawaii was not yet a state. The attack, the attack marked America's entry into World War II. It also marked the beginning of the end of the America First Committee, a large anti-war group that shut down on December 10th that year. This wasn't ty- the tie-dyed hippie peace, love, and understanding anti-war movement we all know from movies about Vietnam, and it wasn't the hate the war, love the troop anti-war groups we know from more recent America wars. This was a we're white Protestant American screw everybody else kind of group. They're hard left isolationists. They wanted to make sure that America didn't bail out Europe, you know, again, like out of the First World War. They wanted America to turn away Jews fleeing the Holocaust, which they did. They wanted to shut the borders, cut off aid, rely on homegrown everything, avoid all international trade as long as possible. And we see some of that kind of isolationist mes- messaging these days still. We see it in tariffs, we see it in closed borders, we see it, you know, I'm not saying open the borders, but there's got to be a better way than what we're doing, right? And we are a country that relies on immigrants. We always have. Another thing I'm going to pick on in a speech this past spring the president told a room full of Jewish Republicans that America is full. He also called Benjamin Netanyahu their prime minister, even though Netanyahu is Israel's prime minister, and he was speaking to Jewish Americans. Strange that he wouldn't remind himself that he's their president. In 1942, boats full of Jews from Europe showed up on American shores. They were told America was full, and they were sent back to Europe, where almost all of them would become Holocaust victims. Now, here's a little perspective. America can't possibly be full. You know how I know? They're building 31 new houses two blocks away from me. If America weren't taking new people, the only people who could go into those houses would be vacating 31 other houses. So there's certainly room for 31 more families anyway. If you have the ability to see the world from someone else's perspective, 
it makes it pretty easy to not hurt someone intentionally. And another reason to consider others' perspectives is to get an understanding of their communicated intent. Communication is a two-way street, so when you are on the receiving end, maybe take a minute, determine what the person you're listening to really meant when they said something, not react emotionally to it. Just pick up a little bit of somebody else's perspective or take a look at your initial reaction, twist it around in your head, and see if you can come up with another view. Even if you don't agree with the new view, if you decide you like the first better, that's fine. But I think it's a valuable exercise. So thank you for being here. If you like this, please rate, review, share if you think others will like it. If you have a friend who might learn something from it, you can go get show notes, betterhumanhood.com slash EP34. That's for episode 34. That's betterhumanhood.com slash EP34 for the show notes. Go visit our friends at kettleandfire.com. Fill up your box, get 10% off your order with the code betterhumanhood at checkout. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful night, a wonderful week. We'll see you next time. Be who you will to be. Thank you for listening. Get show notes and more at betterhumanhood.com. Leave us a rating and review wherever you listen to podcasts. And have yourself a wonderful day.